you so much, everyone. It is a bit unnerving hearing my voice through a microphone, but um, hopefully it'll be okay for the next 10 minutes. The traditional concept of political engagement is an enduring one. However, such a concept is becoming increasingly harder to define. Now, as I was preparing for this speech tonight, I started reminiscing about my own experiences and the journey that I've taken over the years uh, regarding my own political engagement. Uh, the 10-year-old studying the How to Vote cards, and the Australians in the audience will know this, uh, at the mandatory polling booth barbecue during the 1996 federal election, considering the then unknown faces of two politicians called John Howard and Paul Keating, the first-year undergraduate student undertaking gender studies for the first time, and increasingly learning the meaning of the feminist mantra, the personal is political, and finally, to the disenchanted voter in her mid-20s in 2013 at Australia House in London, having to make a choice between two politicians who, to varying degrees, had played a role in the demise of Australia's first female Prime Minister. Having conducted semi-structured interviews with young women over the past few months, all aged between 18 to 30 years and based in London, I've become aware that an increasing dissatisfaction with partisan politics is not unusual. There has been widespread concern within media, political and academic fields regarding the increasing dissatisfaction and disengagement of young people from partisan politics in Western democracies. However, rather than blaming young people for this state of affairs, past researchers argue that this is instead a reflection of the inability of politicians, parties, and political structures to address the concerns of young people and to make politics relevant to their lives. Past research has emphasised that young women in the UK feel increasingly marginalised and excluded from the political sphere and associated media, with a lack of understanding of the process of institutional, pro institutional politics also being observed. Contradictory research exists as to whether young women from minorities and or disadvantaged backgrounds feel additionally excluded from the political process. Whilst it has been observed that young women in many countries are heavily involved in social action and community or activist organisations to a far greater extent than their male counterparts, lower levels of political confidence have also been observed. The perspective that partisan politics traditionally gendered male, and where women are frequently underrepresented in many countries around the world, was not for them, was it a commonly implied assertion through the context of my interviews. In part, this appears to have been influenced by the experiences of several high-profile female politicians and what has been regarded as the highly gendered media coverage that they have gained. The sustained focus on appearance and private life, as well as the sexualization and even pornification of women such as Julia Gillard, Hillary Clinton, and Helly Thorning Schmidt were frequently referenced. However, it has also been noted that the nature of this media treatment is increasingly being afforded to their male counterparts in the political field. One of my participants even disclosed her own experiences um, of receiving online abuse and attention during her experiences, um, her political experiences in the National Union of Students, and how this continues to influence her potential political ambitions, as well as her views regarding women in politics going forward. It is a commonly held academic perspective that, despite evidence of disengagement from formal politics, young people should not be considered to be apolitical. The notion of the political existing beyond the formal realm of the parliamentary sphere was frequently emphasised by a number of my interviewees within the UK context. Examples of this include the politics of workplaces generally, the political potential of mentoring, one-on-one -on -one conversations with friends, online blogs, and the ability to express views and articles through a range of social media platforms. It has been noted, however, that these actions have the potential to go unrecognised due to the fact that they take place within the context of the everyday, rather than within the adult political sphere. In recent years, it has been argued that younger internet users are more inclined than their older counterparts 
to engage with online-based election activities in both the UK and Australia. The increasing number of young people, for instance, using Twitter has prompted an increasing number of politicians to also go online as a means to mobilise younger and potentially first-time voters. In line with other social commentary, the notion that social movements, such as the fourth wave of feminism, are taking place online is increasingly being evoked through platforms such as Tumblr, Twitter and Facebook. In an increasingly developed technological era, it has been argued that it is impossible to escape access to, and for better or worse, the influence of a range of media texts. That being said, a greater recognition of popular culture's role in politics and potential political participation has also been advocated. Facebook, in particular, has also been recognised as key to encouraging and promoting the understanding of news and political events among young women. International events such as the Occupy movement have been seen as evidence of the growing political and activist potential of social media, particularly amongst young people. The rhetoric surrounding the political and democratising potential nature of online engagement has been questioned on several occasions, however. For some reasons, this has been attributed, attributed to the tendency for internet use to be primarily for consumer or leisure reasons, the pervasiveness of the digital divide, and the well-acknowledged commercial dimensions of social media. It has also been noted that the medium has the potential to overtake the message to the detriment of the chosen cause. The perceived flaws of social media were also echoed by several of my interview participants, with reference being made to the potentially reductive nature of socially and politically informed tweets, scepticism surrounding keyboard activism, and the enduring effects of so-called, of, sorry, of past trolling experiences. However, it is interesting to note that a number of interview participants also demonstrated a commitment to the concept and conduct of formal politics, emphasising the importance of the populace, not just young people, to possess political knowledge, potentially opportunities involved with being a member of a political party and being able to agitate for change from within, and the need to carry out their duties as citizens by voting in elections. One participant in particular emphasised the importance of making the statement of declining to vote if faced with an unsatisfactory range of candidates and the potential ramifications of this political act. A number of young women also reminisced about the excitement and optimism that accompanied the rise and celebrity status of a number of politicians in a number of different contexts over the years. Most notably, Nick Clegg and the Liberal Democrats during the context of the 2010 UK general election, and Hillary Clinton's then potential presidential candidacy. As echoed by past academic research and statistics, young people may show signs of political disengagement in a traditional sense. However, this does not necessarily mean that they've completely lost faith in the conduct and potential of the Western democratic process. An understanding of contemporary political engagement, particularly since the advent of new media technologies over the past decade or so, is becoming increasingly complex. I would argue that such methods are often highly flawed and, on occasion, highly gendered. The optimism and evident emotions surrounding traditional forms of political engagement, such as the need to vote, and the expressions of hope for a range of politicians, political parties and ideologies suggest that partisan politics is not yet obsolete. Whilst faith in the system remains, disenchantment is evident within the traditional political sphere and may continue to grow if not addressed. It has even been argued that low voter turnouts amongst young people potentially pose a crisis of democratic legitimacy for ruling governments. The opportunities presented by social media are often met with scepticism, and it, but it is impossible to deny this form of engagement, amongst others, is increasingly important for politicians and the wider public alike. Young people, and young women in particular, may not always be partisan. However, it is important to keep recognising 
that that does not necessarily mean that they are not political. Thank you so much.